an hour and a half. <laughs> oh dear. Audio F... Uh, sorry, Audio XFA. I always get that the wrong way around. I keep thinking it's Audio FAX, but it's not. Audio XFA, thank you very much for the 16-month resubscription. Very much appreciate that. Thank you. Ice cream, pancakes for the win. And tea. And Faceless wants me to drink some tea as well. Okay. Good idea. We definitely want to do a save here. How does trade work now? Doesn't seem actually to be any different. You can just automate more of it. I kind of hope that I can automate the exports, but not the imports. Because the imports I'd still like to do myself. Alright, speed three. Here we go. We're going, we're going. Time is passing. Right, we were going to choose who to pick on next. So we have a truce with Eritrea. Where's diplomacy? How do I select myself? Like that. Okay. Um, political map mode? Okay, how do I add map modes? I can take them away. Uh. Drag the icon to the slot. Well, that's really unintuitive and completely different from every other Paradox game. Even though it says right there, drag a slot. Why not just right click and then select from the list? Civilization we have. All right, let's just see what we've got here. So Atlas we probably don't need. Terrain is the main one. Political, I think, is the diplomatic map mode. No. Political is just this one without the detail. Never mind. Culture, players, religion, trade goods, trade goods. We've got provinces. We've got regions. We've got simple terrain. Simple terrain would be good. We'll put that under there. Population, we've got diplomacy map mode. That's the one. How is this not part of the main thing? Barbarian power, trade routes, fortifications, supply, civilization already there, opinion, unrest and loyalty, naval range, holdings, territory rank, government type, levies. Okay, a little bit surprised that not more of these are, you know, in by default, but it's fine. That, that, that. Diplomacy is the one I wanted to see. So this shows us who we can fight and who we can't. And who likes us. So I, I, I do think that we're going to go after Samnium. I think that does make the most sense. So we're going to begin... Fabricating a claim. Although we have less than 60% center support. So this is where I'm really unsure about how this game works. Like, how do I curry more Senate support for the actions that I want to undertake? Am I not going to wait for the mission? Oh, yeah, there's a mission for this stuff. Never mind, then. <sighs> See, this is what I want to just be automated. I don't care who we're exporting to. Just... Do it. Uh, 
I thought I already had, but how? But this is saying manually elevate, evaluate every single trade proposal we get. Oh, we are accepting any trade offer automatically unless we would lose our capital bonus, which is what that block surplus is, and then also the denied requests, I assume. The might of Rome! Lucius, proud son of the noble Postumius, speaks with the courier Hostilia. His tales of our ancestors' greatest victories extort the Senate to match their achievements before, with a twinkling eye, he delivers a heartfelt appeal to ensure our enemies may never again be given the opportunity to threaten the sacred republic of our ancestors. There is static applause and much thrashing of togas. This man must address the soldiers. So we get a rousing orator. He gains popularity. And we gain approval from the popularis. Well, that happens regardless. Or we gain manpower. No, I think I'd rather have the morale. At the moment. If you go to your country overview and go to the second tab. Ah. Yeah, see, this is doing imports. Imports I do want to do manually. It's the exports I want to do automatically. Exports I want automatic. Imports I don't. Oh, and also we have free infrastructures, don't we? How do those work? Oh, here we go. That's where we can see the holdings. There we can see the buildings. Here we already have the Temple of Jupiter. Buildings. There are so many new buildings. It's one or the other. already done the imports. Not sure what you're trying to say. Oh, for these things. Right, okay, yeah. Now I understand what you're saying. Gotcha. So yes, we can either fortify, which gives provincial loyalty and fort infrastructure. We can do the infrastructure, which increases population. We can do the business, which gives us another land import route or we can do the building slots um which is a difficult choice because this is the capital so usually in the capital it'd be like import routes 100 percent. but also this is rome where we would like to get a pretty high population uh how can we see what the maximum population is versus what we've got 63 out of 58 I'm guessing that there are buildings which increases that. So we've got level 1 fortress. Ports increase population capacity. The ports would be built here in, for example, Capua. Okay, so Rome itself is almost full, but the areas around Rome, much less so. Aqueducts increase population capacity. Granary increases food and civilization level. Libraries increase research. Marketplaces increases civilization, assimilation, and 
trade routes. Training camp increases manpower and civ level. Tax offices taxes. Mills increase civ level and output for slaves. Forum is civ level. Food. Happiness. Okay, so these are the desired ratios. So unit or um Promotions are now done automatically. So if we had a court of law, we would say we want more citizens here. If we had an academy, we would say we want more nobles here. So I'm thinking an aqueduct, because this place is almost full. Is it possible to play tall in this game? Yes. Civilization level and aqueducts would be the main ways to increase pop cap. So I think I'm going to get the aqueduct, because that will be multiplied by this, right? Yeah. Population capacity plus a percentage. So let's just get the raw numbers with the aqueduct. Uh, this is also going to be percentage increase. That's going to be land routes. Do I want a land route? Then I can get another source of fish. Which is going to be more food supply. Now, how can I see what my food surplus is? Like, is this going to... It's changing by zero a month. Consuming 660, but how much is it gaining? I think we don't know until the end of this month. I, th I feel like this is Rome. Like, this needs to be population capacity. Have I ever played tall and dominated a paradox game? Yes. Did that Tear Hut series ever go onto YouTube? Unfortunately, I don't think I did. That was probably like the most tall that I've ever done. I don't think I went over like five provinces. That entire game was a multiplayer game. I stayed alive. I survived. Started as a two province miner and survived throughout the entire game just by going super tall. Focusing on trade. What means tall? So, some Paradox games. Crusader Kings uh, has a problem where the the game is just about painting the color your painting the map your color. So, for example, we're playing as Rome. We would want as much territory owned by us as possible. That's like your average paradox game. But there are some, and Imperator is one of them, where you can just maintain a very small nation and still remain very powerful. So you could take a country like Rhodes or Massilia, and then just like take over Crete or just take over a small part of Turkey and still be competitive with the likes of Egypt and Rome and Carthage um, because your country, instead of like having grown wide, has gone very tall. So you have super efficient provinces is basically what it means. High populations. And I would say that Imperator is actually probably one of the best games to do tall play because it's all about population. As long as you keep a high population, you can have your high population concentrated in a very small area. Just have big cities. glad I caught you playing this being cautiously curious about Imperator I heard it got better well that's the hope um, I'm still way too early into this game to really say this is better or this isn't better um, but I like the changes I really like this new UI the UI is so much better than the old one um, jury is still out just because I've progressed a grand total of I think 19 days in two hours sorry not sorry at all Okay, that's the month tick over. Hopefully these are being done automatically. So I'm just going to go ahead and close those. Uh, we are now making a bucket load of money. Our income has gone from like 0.6 to 4.3, which is fantastic. Uh, we are doing the mission, which will finish on the 1st of October, 451. 
Then, what was it I was really checking to see what changed? Food. Changes by plus 31.6 every month because we are getting a surplus. Large part through trade, I would imagine. Yeah, Rome is, in, is adding 22 food and I'm guessing that's because of our food imports. Province loyalty is going... Well, it's, it's not changing. It's the capital. So that's more of a thing for like here where it is decreasing slightly. Food here is going up. Food here is staying the same. I don't 100% remember how food supply works, but that's okay. You're a level 8 ruler. Yeah, you guys are fine. Temptation beckoned. A representative visited Publius last night, claiming to have been sent by Publius Cornelius Babatus. Speaking earnestly, he tells of a deal in which Publius will donate a vast sum of money to the Roman treasury in return for nothing but a favourable outlook on his future activities. Taking donations is becoming more commonplace. Perhaps this wouldn't be so bad after all. We can certainly do business. Best not get caught up. Or this undermines our very democracy. We don't have any tyranny, so we don't need to do that. Uh, this guy is already not hugely loyal. He is the Pontifex Maximus. The Pontifex Maximus is one of the most powerful people. Also, I think he is the head of the Red Family, isn't he? Yeah, so do we want the head of the yellow family to be friends with the head of the red? Probably, because I think that's going to mean that we have less problems between them. Absolutely, we can definitely do business. Plus, we do have the corruption reduction, so even if we do have problems, uh, we can get rid of that. And now we have this for five years. I don't think we necessarily need the morale buff. Where do we get the second part? Oh, are these permanent bonuses? And then if you do the omen, you get the second one as well, which would be the discipline. In which case, I think I'd go for the commerce income. Yeah, that's exactly how that works. Okay. So our morale of armies is already high because Mars uh, is one of the gods. And then discipline could have gone up by another 6%. But we already spent our innovations on getting more discipline. Where are the armies? So the armies have changed. Armies are now no longer just a permanent feature on the map. They are now levies. Kind of like uh, Crusader Kings 2. So we have two provinces which can get their own levy armies. So we've got the Italia uh, levy, which is three supply carts, eight heavy infantry, 17 light infantry, and five light cavalry. And then the Magna Gratia, which is three light infantry and one light cavalry. So if we go to war, we raise the levies, which will decrease our economic output. So there is now a very real cost to being at war because your people are now fighting, uh, off fighting. That's the uh, Freeman. And the composition of these levies is determined by the accepted cultures within that province. So, for example, a levy from Italy is going to have a lot of heavy infantry, whereas a levy from Egypt is going to have a lot of camels. It depends on the culture of that. How do you make more troops? Uh, you change your levy laws, or later on you build legions. So legions are standing armies. You can't get them until later into the game. And they are like professional soldiers. They're a lot more expensive, but they're also a lot stronger. And the cool thing about legions is they will get a reputation and a history. So depending on what they've done in the game will determine how they then are perceived and how they actually fight. So they'll gain traits, basically. So if you have a legion which takes a very heavily defended city, they may get a reputation as excellent besiegers and then get a bonus to sieges in the future. If you hover over the culture, it should give you a thingy for the thingy. Ah, oh, there it is. 
Roman, light cavalry, 15%, heavy cavalry, oh, sorry, he heavy infantry, 30%, and the light infantry, 55%, and I'm guessing that there are ways of modifying that over time. So, Sabellian, chariots, 5%, heavy infantry, 35 light infantry, 60 uh, Compared to Egypt, or the Boharics, which are 10% ca camels, 20 heavy infantry, 20 light cavalry, and then only 50% light infantry. So the Italian armies are a lot more focused on infantry forces. Right, so we want to start building some things. We're already getting an aqueduct in Rome proper. We probably want to do that in Vey as well, being a highly populated place with decent farmland. So let's get you getting one of those. I think we probably want to upgrade the port in Ostia. Because that increases population capacity, it also increases migration attraction. And I'm guessing once they're in Ostia, they can start to dissipate amongst the others. At least I hope that a lot more of the population stuff is automated, because that was always really, really finicky. And this will also increase the uh, speed that we can build ships, so that sounds really good to me. And then Lavian. Lavian. Uh, we can't do anything because we just spent a lot of money. That's fine. We are doing what we need to do. Historic Wars. Quintus Apelius Panzer talks of the Republic's military traditions. Our ancestors fought valiantly to protect the city of Romulus from our domineering neighbours. We should recall what became of these invaders, the Sabines, whose women we carried off to Rome. Estruscan king Lars Prosensa, who... Uh, Horatius Cocalis Valiant threw back from the Pons Subilicus. May they never again dare to threaten the Servian walls. So we can have attack is the best form of defense for 10 years, which is siege ability and heavy infantry combat attack. Or surely it's the walls that keep us safe. Fort defense and heavy infantry defense. I'm pretty sure being Rome, we're going to be on the offensive. So attack is the best form of defense. Good time zones, more just haven't seen Imperato since just after release. What's new? Uh, what isn't is kind of the answer. This game has changed quite a lot. Would I suggest getting all the DLC for this game? Uh, hard for me to say. So whenever it comes to recommendations for DLC, you've got to bear in mind that I get most of these for free. So it's difficult for me to make a value comparison. Um, so I don't know. And yeah, actually what Egavor says is probably the right thing. If you want to support the developers, yes. If not, then no. I mean, the thing you've got to remember for games like Imperator is, or any Paradox game, really, is they're constantly evolving. They're constantly changing. They're constantly getting updates. The reason they're getting updates is because the DLCs sell. So every time you buy a DLC, you are then basically financing the next free update. And yes, I realize that you're financing a free update doesn't really make it free, but you understand what I'm saying. This patch is so broken. Okay. Sadly, the mili- Huh? Yeah, it did. Oh, the traditions. Yeah, okay. The military traditions may not have- I don't know. I didn't play very much of the game when traditions were new. So I can't say very much about how the traditions changed. Uh, Quintus Marcus Tremulus rises, clearing his throat vigorously. The Etruscan city-states have prov proved time and time again the hostility to Rome. At every turn, they collude with the Umbrians and the Samnites like snakes. A great victory of Lacus Vidimo has revealed their weakness. Are they ripe for an invasion? We gain claims on the Etruscan territories in the provinces of Tuscia and Dodopolis. They dislike us. He gains popularity. Or no. Oh, heck yeah. They must be destroyed. Etruscans Delanda Est. Is this super broken? Still too early to say. We have progressed through a grand total of four months. The jealousy of the Samnites. Today, Marcus Aemilius Paulus delivers a 
polemic against the Samnites. Samnium once it more threatens our gates, concealing their ill intentions behind Trojan platitudes. How many wars must we fight and win before they submit? How many male men? Proud Romans need die before our southern border is safe. No more, I say. The disgrace of the Caudine Forks must be cleansed once and for all with Samnite blood. So we gain claims on the Samnite territories. Or we don't. Yeah, we want those claims. And encouraging the expansion. Crush the Samnites will be what we try to do. You can get like 30 to 40 starting experience in your units of inventions. So hiring and deleting troops in capsules, you can get like 30. Oh, okay. All right, onwards. Wait, hang on. Raising troops and deleting them? You can't do that anymore. They're levies. It's not like you're hiring soldiers. You either raise them or you drop them. There's no recruiting and deleting. Saw a little another stream earlier. It's the first time I thought this game was attractive. It's really changed. Yeah, the UI changed. Like, even just, like, the borders like this. Oh, my God, it makes a difference. I think one of my biggest turnoffs for um, Imperator before, and I didn't really realize, is just how ugly it was. Like, here's the thing. Like, the main map is great. The main map looks really cool, and I like it a lot. Obviously, CK3 has taken this concept and just run with it, but the UI was hideous really disliked the like just solid white just didn't look good this is a lot better if they've added the other uh, contrast gaius junius Bublica speaks on our long feud with the sabines every roman knows the abduction of the sabine women by our stalwart predecessors their marriages and the gambit to avoid war between the fathers and husbands but do they know the sabines colluded with the samnites in our recent war the time has come to finish what was started and absorb the sabines completely the sabines will be erased from history Our maximum manpower is 12,000. Manpower recovers every 30 years in this. I know it's not 10 years like EU4. It's slower. To ensure support for war, an official auspice of the Jupiter Optimus Maximus, the patron of the good faith and the greatest of the gods, is recommended by the officials. Assurance of victory will hearten the soldiery and buoy the people's enthusiasm. While there is no doubt that Roma will be granted favourable auguries, it would not bode well if the priest returned with an inconclusive or... Uh, Joe forbid pessimistic result. We will lay our faith in Jupiter. Our augur gains loyalty and we gain political influence or not. Or we pay him. He gains five. Sorry, our ruler gains five corruption. So with these guys, the corruption, is that corruption reduction on a per character basis? Yes, it is. Sanctioned privileges will have a corruption reduction thing. And that'll gain his loyalty even further. He is one of the reds. He is a Cornelius. And he's the Augur. So what does the Augur do? That's you. Oh, you inc- Okay, so you're actually one of the people that's just not very good at their job. And we'd quite like to bring in, for example, Megellius. However, and I'm not entirely sure why this changed, but some of these guys have gotten extra jobs positions now. Four out of three. Like, where's that extra job come from? Volnarius and Tribunus Plebis. 
Venus Plebis Vulnaris. 